Welcome to the Alex Jones Show on this Monday, July 1st, 2013. This is Mike Adams, the Health Ranger, sitting in for Alex today. He will be back tomorrow with some amazing guests. And speaking of amazing guests, we've got today coming up NSA insider Wayne Madsen. So you'll definitely want to stay tuned into that. He has been leaking documents that are now breaking news in the EU showing that the United States government, well, the NSA, the CIA, and the FBI, I don't know if you can really call them the government, maybe the, the shadow government has been bugging the embassies, the diplomats, basically all communications going back to EU countries. So that's big news, big breaking news. And I think The Guardian pulled their story on that after publishing it. So there's some controversy there already. We'll talk to Wayne Madsen later on in the show about that issue. Also coming up today in the, uh, well, actually just at the bottom of this hour, we've got Greg Caton. He is a resident of Ecuador. He was kidnapped by the U.S. State Department at gunpoint in Ecuador, was illegally extradited. You can't even really use the word extradited because that implies a legal process. He was kidnapped, actually out of Ecuador, flown back to the United States and thrown in prison for two years. And it turns out that the United States of America actually has a routine habit of kidnapping Americans that they want to kidnap in Ecuador. And the reason that's relevant right now is because, of course, Ed Snowden is seeking asylum in Ecuador and 14 other countries at the moment, according to recent press on DrudgeReport.com today. 15 countries on his list of possible asylum destinations. So what happens if Ed Snowden ends up in Ecuador and then the U.S. government just decides to kidnap him like they did Greg Caton? Well, we're going to find out by talking to Mr. Caton today, get more information about how that actually works and how lawless and insane it really is. Now, on the world news front, by the way, we've just got a ton of news today on so many fronts, uh, health, politics, finance, you name it. And that's the reason I only have two guests today, because it's just, just so much news to cover. We've got, of course, the big Egyptian protest, the biggest civil protest in the history of the world, according to some press reports, happening right now. They're trying to throw, I believe his name is Mohamed um, Morsi, out of office there, the recently elected leader of, of Egypt following the, um, the uprising against the former dictator. It's a big deal. We're talking about millions of people in the streets right now, and we're talking about the potential for armed conflict. So it could break out into an actual civil war, a shooting war in Egypt. That could happen in just the next few days. Now, I know the U.S. press doesn't tend to cover those things very much, but it's something that you need to know about. Now, in the United States today, one of the big issues that's happening is right here, just a few miles from where I sit here at the InfoWars studio, you've got... Texas debating abortion limits and a big rally, well, two big competing rallies are now forming at the Capitol building just a few miles from here. And you've got police officers in riot gear on horseback. <laughs> and they're setting up massive barricades all around the state Capitol. They brought in police in riot gear from Houston because apparently the Austin police force wasn't large enough, so they had to ship them in from Houston. I guess, are they expecting some kind of a, are they expecting the uh, the, the pro-choice people to have a mad rush into the Capitol and, and, and have a coup or something? I mean, I'm not sure what, what's all the police all about, but uh, things are heating up over there. The, uh, the Democrats not happy that they can't kill babies after 20 weeks, at 20 weeks of pregnancy. They want, to, they want to have the right to make sure they can terminate that baby's life at 21 weeks, 24 weeks, 28 weeks, you name it. Hey, they want to kill the baby after it's born and call it post-birth abortion. So they are rallying to protect their, quote, right to uh, kill babies that are already, you know, humans, of course. I mean, viable viable human beings whose lives are protected under the Constitution. Hi, this is Mike Adams, the Health Ranger, with some news about some new additions to the InfoWars store. You know good health is freedom. When you're healthy, you're not a slave to the medical system. Everything works well, your brain, your body, even your spirit. You're a healthier person. And to help support that great health, 
Alex has asked me to source the cleanest, most potent superfoods and other similar products in the world and bring them to the InfoWars store. So we've done that. The brand name is Health Ranger Select, and we're starting out right now with these three products. We've got Himalayan salt from Pakistan, formed hundreds of thousands of years ago in an ancient seabed long before modern pollution destroyed much of the oceans. This is loaded with trace minerals, and it's pristine, true, full-spectrum sea salt. We've also got Natural Attitude Turmeric. It's an extract of turmeric, very potent, tastes great, alcohol-free. This is from organic turmeric out of India. And we've also got clean chlorella. And we sourced and, and did research on all the chlorella sources around the world. And we found the two cleanest sources that have the lowest levels of any kind of contaminants. In fact, this one is virtually free of all metals and all contaminants. It's called clean chlorella. And it's, it's about two thirds protein and it's got chlorophyll and chlorella growth factor in it. Check it out online. It's an amazing superfood that athletes are using and people are using to help support healthy lifestyles. It's fantastic. This is all packaged in our certified organic facility here in Central Texas. There we follow USDA certified standards and we're audited every year by the USDA certifier to make sure that we comply with all organic standards. That combined with the fact that we only source super clean superfoods and raw materials from around the world means that our products represent the cleanest and most potent products that you'll find across the natural products industry. Check all of these out under the Health Ranger Select brand name at the InfoWars store, InfoWarsStore.com. And we'll be bringing you more of these in the near future. Thanks and take care. This is the Alex Jones Show. Mike Adams, the Health Ranger, filling in for Alex today. Alex will be back tomorrow. Thank you for joining us. We've got for the next three hours just astonishing news that you, you can't miss. And let me just give you an example of what we're talking about. And we also have some great guests coming on, including... Wayne Madsen, NSA insider, who's been breaking news all over the world. So he'll be joining us in the second hour. But check this out. The Department of Defense is creating a copy of all of us in an alternate reality, well, a virtual reality, to find out how long you can go without food or water or how you will respond to televised propaganda, writes the register. It turns out that the DOD is developing a massive, what, what they call a sentient world simulation. They're creating a massive PSYOP simulator in a complex computer system to simulate the decisions of every sentient being on the planet. They're actually going to populate it with, you know, 7 billion uh, little sentient programs or, or whatever the, the actual number is to find out how you're going to react to their psychological operations. So then they're going to test in the simulation what would happen if they did a false flag attack, for example. How would you react? They're going to test what would happen if they dumped more fluoride into the water and dumbed everybody down a little more. They're going to test probably chemtrail attacks, biological weapons, uh, rolling out more liberal propaganda like making you think the family is bad. And that uh, on, the only people that should have rights are uh, undocumented immigrants or people who are uh, not heterosexual gays or, you know, just they're going to test every possible agenda they can think of in this simulator. So that's just the start of the kind of news that we're going to get into today. This simulator, the sentient world simulator, replicates financial institutions, media outlets, and even street corner shops. It applies theories of economics and human psychology, and its developers believe they can predict how individuals and mobs will respond to various stressors. Well, isn't that just delightful? So now we're gonna have a PSYOP simulator run by the Department of Defense. And need I remind you, by the way, that Google and NASA Remember, Google has ties to the NSA. NASA, part of the federal government, obviously, have just purchased a 512 qubit quantum computer that operates in multiple physical dimensional realities. I mean, this is science fiction becoming real. A 512 qubit quantum computer from a company called D-Wave has just been purchased. Now, a quantum computer is... <laughs> Pardon the, the, the pun, but the metaphor, but literally you know, quantum leaps above 
the processing capability of a normal CPU like you might have in your home computer or even the supercomputer. Quantum computers operate in multiple dimensions and they will allow these computing systems to achieve things like easy speech recognition, visual recognition. They will allow robots to have tactical thinking, to have reasoning skills, to be able to outthink human beings. There's the article, it's in Scientific American. Google and NASA snap up quantum computer called D-Wave 2. I wrote about this on Natural News last week. It's a big deal because, and I'm gonna talk about this later in the show, we are entering an era that is called the rise of the machines. Now, Alex spoke about this last week and he was right on about it. His analysis is 100% correct. I'm gonna to add to that analysis today and tell you why the future doesn't need most of you. <laughs> That's, I know that's shocking to hear, but the rise of robots with quantum computing processing units is going to make most human labor obsolete. And that's gonna mean that we're gonna have five or six billion people on the planet that the globalists no longer need. So we'll get into that in more detail. You can only imagine what that means in terms of population control and mass soft kill, genocide, the Holocaust 2.0 that's gonna be coming in the next few decades. But let's move on to other news in the meantime. We'll get back to that because that's more of an in-depth topic. Russian forces to provide security at US events. This is a top story on Infowars.com right now. Paul Joseph Watson wrote this, check this out. FEMA signs a deal with the Russian Emergency Situations Ministry to quote, exchange experts. Yeah, we're gonna exchange some experts so that Russian officials can provide security at mass events in the United States. Oh yeah. So the, the sellout of US sovereignty continues. And of course, FEMA would love to do it. FEMA, of course, the agency that likes to go door to door confiscating people's guns every time there's a hurricane or a flood or a tornado. First thing they do is say, hey, come in, let's take your guns. Take your guns away. And now we're gonna have apparently Russian troops coming in to assist FEMA with that effort. There was a press release released by the Ministry of the Russian Federation for Civil Defense and the and US officials. They met on June 25th at the 17th Joint U.S.-Russia Cooperation Committee on Emergency Situations, and they said they're gonna, quote, exchange experts during joint rescue operations in major disasters. Oh, you mean like major disasters that the U.S. government causes? <laughs> the ones that, that, that they make happen? <laughs> now, <laughs> I'm not saying that every hurricane or tornado or, or, or fire is caused by the government, but they, they can certainly set off their own disasters, such as an epidemic, a release of a bioweapon, a self-replicating weapon that could cause a natural, uh, a national disaster. And then they call in the Russians, because, you know, it's funny, because Steve Quayle has been talking about this for many years. If you go to Steve Quayle's website, stevequayle.com, he's always got headlines that talk about, oh, the Russian troops coming in. That they're already positioned, he says. They're already positioned in key places all around the country. Not a lot of people are talking about that. But now here's further proof in this story that FEMA wants Russian troops to come in and uh, take over in emergency situations. So, see, there you go. There you go. It's all, it's all happening right before our very eyes. Now, another story up on Infowars.com by Kit Daniels, one of the newer members of the writing team here. ATF is arming robbers in uh, hatched plots, leaving many dead. Now, this is a huge breaking story, and I think it was USA Today. Yeah, USA Today did a big in-depth investigation. Oh, my God, USA Today was involved in actual journalism. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. I love it. I think they did a good job with this one. So the story is like this. ATF agents are setting up these, these honeypot operations, sting operations, to ensnare would-be armed robbers to say, hey, let's go hit this, uh, this drug distribution house where they've got a bunch of weed or a bunch of smack or whatever, and they have a lot of cash. Let's, let's go hit them. Let's bring in some guns, you know, shoot a few people, tie up everybody else, take their smack, take their cash, and, and they've got under undercover footage showing this. Well, and it turns out that these little honeypot operations have so far left seven people dead. 
because because the ATF is going out there and recruiting people who bring guns to the sting and lead starts flying and people end up dead. And so not everybody in, in the court system is happy about all of this. In fact, they're saying it's a clear case of entrapment that, uh, in fact, uh, one or, or two federal judges here is on the record. You have to look at the story on Infowars.com. ATF arming robbers is the, the first headline that some judges are saying that this is entrapment. This is not legitimate. The ATF is running around recruiting these people and, and practically making them do this. Well, we know the FBI does the same thing. The FBI plans most of the terror plots that they then foil in the United States. That was right out of the New York Times. The FBI plans the attack. Remember, they planned an attack to blow up a bridge in Cleveland. They planned an attack to fly, what was it, a, a, a drone into the Pentagon, I think, or the White House. The FBI comes up with these plots, and then they run around finding these low IQ, mentally impaired individuals who are usually substance addicted. They give them a few beers, they give them some weed, they give them whatever to get them on board to say, yeah, you, you drive the van, you fly the drone, you set the bombs, whatever. We'll give you more weed, we'll give you more beer, more alcohol, more cash. And then at the very last minute, the FBI, oh, catches these terrorists. Oh, really? Well, they weren't terrorists until the FBI put the plans in their hands. They were just bums on the street, okay? Harmless bums sitting on the street until the FBI came along and recruited them to become terrorists so that the FBI could then claim it's stopping terrorism. And what terrorists, what kind of terrorism is it stopping? The terrorists that it comes up with. So the ATF is now joining the FBI in uh, this little scheme here. Now, I watched some of that video, by the way. It is, it is freaky. You got this African-American dude in there sitting in that car talking about how he's going to cap everybody and how he's done it a million times before and how he's so cool and how he does it high on drugs to make sure that he's clear-headed. This is what he says in the car. This is on the video. <laughs> I'm just like, wow, man, no wonder I carry a Glock all the time. I mean, people like that come in, I'm going to let loose on them. And, and no wonder I don't run a drug distribution house. That's not, not a good career move if you want to stay alive, by the way. Let's move on to some other news. I'm sorry, I got to move faster. We've got so much crazy news, but it's all so insane at every level. We've got single women's insurance premiums for health insurance are going to double in California. That's thanks to Obamacare. Yeah, thank you, Obama, for your gift to single women. Make them pay twice what they used to pay into the monopoly-run health insurance exchanges that have now been mandated by the same Supreme Court that says same-sex couples can marry each other. <laughs> we'll talk about that in, a, in another minute when we come back. This is the Alex Jones Show. The world is insane. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Now you can watch Alex Jones live at Infowars.com forward slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. You can also browse the network, the Infowars Nightly News, and over 60 movies and documentaries all together in one place. You can watch the Alex Jones Radio Show live as it happened. So check it out, Infowars.com forward slash show. All right, we're back. This is the Alex Jones Show. Mike Adams, the health ranger, editor of naturalnews.com, filling in for Alex today and... Enjoying the insanity of the news, let's go to the next insane story. Clorox has unleashed a hate speech ad campaign smearing fathers. Yes, they're attacking fathers, calling them, well, essentially the same as clueless dogs. They're saying that fathers lack the judgment and fine motor skills to take care of children. Compares dads to dogs in an in a online ad promotional piece called Six Mistakes That New Dads Make. It accuses dads of being so stupid that they can't put their children's clothes on frontwards, the, the clothes are on backwards, and they take their babies out to in the rain with short sleeves on and, and sit them down in front of reality TV shows like the Kardashians and, and probably just incredible. So 
here we go. Clorox has joined the bandwagon of attacking men. And I don't know about you out there, but I'm I'm sick of it. I'm fed up with it. And I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna put up with it anymore. I'm gonna talk about this because if Clorox had said these very same things about blacks or women or gays, they would have been blasted. They would have marches on their headquarters. They would have been just reamed in the mainstream media. But because they chose to attack fathers, well, suddenly it's all funny and it's all okay because dads are always depicted as morons in, in sitcoms and TV shows and movies and, and the popular press and, uh, and uh, apparently by Clorox as well. So I have announced over on Natural News a boycott of Burt's Bees. You may say, wait a minute, what's Burt's Bees got to do with anything here? Well, Clorox owns Burt's Bees. So I think that all dads out there should stop buying Clorox and stop buying Burt's Bees products to protest this attack, this hate speech attack against men. And here's some of the quotes that they say. Some fathers, men, dads have been inspired by raunchy comedies to bring babies to inappropriate places like casinos, pool halls, and poetry readings. This is actually from Clorox. <laughs> this, is, this is hate speech against men. Now, what I'm wondering is, why is this okay to always attack men? And the answer is because the, the system is trying to destroy families and especially trying to destroy men. And last week, when Alex covered with Ben Fuchs on this show, the feminization of men through BPA chemicals, plastics, chemicals, hormone mimickers that are just throughout the food supply, throughout food packaging, he hit on something that's very true that the White House is denying, that these chemicals tend to feminize males. So you've got the male population in America is shifting towards a metrosexual kind of stance, a, a feminization, where they're no longer willing to stand up for any of their rights. And that's part of the agenda, I think, is to get men to not stand up for their rights. Men are supposed to be the, the warrior archetype, the protectors of the family, part of the family unit working in cooperation with their wives to raise healthy children. But now the system wants to say, well, men are morons and only women can change diapers. And that's what Clorox has jumped on to. And of course, they heard an earful from men who were tired of being smeared for being men. And they pulled that campaign off of the internet. But of course, we, we linked to it, a cached version of it, so you can still see what it says. But this is a kind of sexism. And I'm wondering, when is the civil rights movement for men going to be formed? When is that going to take off? Because, and when is the civil rights movement for maligned Caucasians going to take off? Because today it is apparently okay to use racial slurs, cracker, cracker this, cracker that against white men, and especially against fathers, as Clorox just did, it's okay to bash whites, it's okay to bash men, to blame them for everything. Civil rights is supposed to be about all men and women are created equal, regardless of your color. And I denounce racism, and I know that Alex does as well. Here at InfoWars, we denounce racism, we denounce corporate smear campaigns against men and against fathers and against women. We would, have, we would jump to the same defense if they were attacking gays or women or African Americans, because we actually believe in civil rights, that is that all men and women are created equal and that they all deserve equal protection and equal dignity in our culture. So enough of the attacks on white men and fathers, Clorox. Get it through your stinking heads. Fire your marketing department and grow up and go back and read your history books. Read Martin Luther King. Judge people by the content of their character, not the color of their skin, okay? Get it through your heads. We're sick of it. We've had enough of it. viewers have demanded it so now you're gonna get it more pro second amendment gun shows in the month of june what we've learned is you cannot hide behind an eye beam when there's a 50 cal present
Fingers and Arms, 50 Cal Ammo Review, and more. Coming in the month of June to the InfoWar. I refuse to be censored and silenced by the bigots out there who, uh, who say that anything that a white man says criticizing the position or the policy of a black president is uh, automatically racist. I refuse to play that stupid mind game, all right? We're gonna lay it out straight in every case and we're gonna fight for the civil rights of everybody regardless of their skin color, regardless of their religion. I mean, this is the libertarian principle that we think you should be free to live your life with minimum intervention or you know, least, least government intervention possible. Even if I don't agree with your position or your religion or even your sexual orientation, I'm not gonna go out there and push my beliefs on you, but at the same time, I don't want you to push your beliefs on me. It's a two-way street. You gotta respect and tolerate each other and have dignity for each other. That's the way it works. So when I criticize an Obama policy, that's not racism, people. That's me criticizing a policy or a behavior or a speech or a decision of a person. It's not racism just because he happens to have more skin pigmentation. That's ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, come on. You know, part of the problem, and by the way, we've got Greg Caton coming up in just a second here to talk about the U.S. government kidnapping Americans in Ecuador. But part of the problem is that we, we have gone past the threshold where, where most Americans can actually parse language, where you can actually communicate to them at a linguistic level of sufficient cognitive understanding, grasping the concepts that are trying to be discussed. And I think a great example of this was defense witness at the Zimmerman trial, Rachel Jantel. I, I don't know what <laughs> what, how she was brought up or what chemicals she was exposed to, but she cannot parse language. She is illiterate. That is not a racist comment just because she's black. If a white woman was on the stand and did the same things, she would be illiterate. It is a, she is a victim of the system, people. I'm not criticizing her as a person. I'm saying she is a victim of the system of the mass fluoride poisoning, of the heavy metals in the food, the pesticides in the food. All of the environmental chemicals that are put out there, the BPA and others, the chemtrails, are killing the brain function of people everywhere. And we're starting to see that when a woman gets on the stand like that, a 19-year-old woman, and can't read, something is wrong with our country and she is a victim, all right? And that's not racist to say that. I'm defending her against the system that's trying to poison her and kill her. It's sad. It saddens my heart to see a 19-year-old African-American woman Haitian, you know, Haitian heritage growing, growing up in Miami who can't really speak in, in coherent sentences. Something is wrong with that. We need to protect all of us, all of our children, our young girls and boys, teenagers, black, white, Asian, you name it. We all are being victimized and poisoned by this system. We all need protection against the global elite that are trying to kill us. And I think she's just an example of just how bad it has gotten. So my heart goes out to her. I hope, I hope we can find a way to help her heal. Now you can watch the InfoWars nightly news streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at InfoWars.com forward slash show.